And hello, everyone, and welcome to Opera Property Management System Training. Today, we're going to learn about the front desk. The different items that we will learn about today is how to check in a guest, how to get credit card authorization for that guest you're checking in, how to pre-block the reservations that are arriving today ahead of time, how to do a walk-in, we're also going to look at the house status screen, and we'll also look at a couple reports that pertaining to checking guests for the front desk arrival training today. So just a real quick look, um, in Opera, when you're going to check in a guest, um, it's going to be under the front desk button. So if you go to front desk and you click on arrivals, this takes you to the arrival screen. Notice we have the yellow border, the search border. So anything we put in here is uh, a search filter. If I just click search up in the right hand corner, it brings up all my arrivals today. Arrivals meaning anybody that has an arrival date of today's date, uh, which today in our training hotel, it's June 1. So any reservation that has a arrival date on June 1 will show up in the arrival screen. We will come back to this in a little bit. So let's talk about what happens on the day of arrival. So think about that person that works the front desk seven to three, the different things that they need to do uh, during their shift so they can prepare for arrivals. Because uh, a lot of times arrivals don't uh, show up until in the middle of the afternoon. A lot of hotels will, uh, a lot of hotels will have a check-in time at three or four o'clock in the afternoon. But always remember, you're going to have early arrivals. Some people may arrive at 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning as requested on their reservation. So a couple things you should check uh, on the morning, during the mornings of uh, arrivals. You should check our house status screen. To get to the house status screen, you're going to use our quick keys. So if you do a shift F3, shift F3 takes you to the house status screen here. Always remember to populate the screen. You're going to click on search. This gives you an overview of what's going on at your hotel at this very moment. If you notice that we have arrivals expected today, we have 14. Arrivals that were made, reservations made today was 11. Also up at the top here, your total physical rooms to sell is 120. Notice we don't have any rooms on out of order. And we do not have any rooms on out of service yet, but we will show you how to do that. Over on the right, the end of day projection. So your available you have available tonight is 105 rooms. We have 15 that is occupied tonight with an occupancy percentage of 12.5. Shows our total projected revenue and our average daily rate for the reservations that have been made for your property. Down in the bottom right hand corner is your housekeeping status area. Do you notice we have 120 rooms on dirty this morning? So we don't have any on inspected and we don't have any on clean. So if somebody walked in right now, we would not have a room ready for them. You also can see out of order, out of service, and queue rooms and turn down status. Notice you have the search box in the left hand corner. You could search by room class. If, you, if your hotel has been set up with room class and configuration, or you can search by particular room types. And notice you could search for future dates if you wanted to. This is the house status screen. Okay, the next thing that uh, a front desk person would do in the morning is maybe pre block some of the rooms ahead of time. Maybe your VIP guests that are arriving or, your, or other people, maybe a group that you have coming in you want to get pre-blocked so that you can put them all together. So if you wanted to pre-block rooms ahead of time for the reservations that are arriving today, you can go to the front desk button. If you don't like to use the icon, you can use the word front desk at the top. And always remember if you don't like using the mouse, you can use the alt 
F because the F is underlined and it will take you to the front desk. So we're going to use the down arrow and we're going to go to room assignment. In the room assignment area, notice up in the left hand corner it tells you what screen you're on. You have the yellow border here so you can filter your search. Notice it defaults to today's date. Down below, you have all your arriving reservations, whether they're pre-blocked with a room number or whether they have not been pre-blocked. If you notice down below, we have a few rooms that have already been blocked here. They're with a group. Okay, if we use the arrow over here, it tells you they're with the opera training retreat group. Notice on the left, we have the housekeeping status. So all these rooms that have been pre-blocked ahead of time, we can tell what the housekeeping status is here. Remember, all our rooms are dirty right now. Okay. Notice we have one that's on clean, which is our posting master. If we want to just see the rooms that have not been blocked, we can click on the advanced button up in the right hand corner and we can uncheck assign rooms. We checked assign and we uncheck unassign rooms. So I've checked the unassigned rooms. I clicked search. And these are the three rooms that I have left that have not been pre-blocked ahead of time. Notice the room types. I have a K1 and a DK1 reservations. Over on the right here, we have a few buttons here that I'm going to go over. If you wanted, so we're highlighted on this reservation. If you wanted to look at this guest's profile, we can highlight it and click on profile and it would take you to the profile of that individual person. If you wanted to look at the reservation for this person that you have highlighted on, you can click on RESV, which stands for reservation, and it takes you to the reservation screen. And always remember when you're pre-blocking rooms, make sure you look at the red lamps down at the bottom to see if there's any important information that needs to look at. Like this Carol Hartman, she has comments. So I would suggest to look at the comments before I pre-block the room and it says guests would like the first floor. All right, so we looked at the reservation for Carol Hartman. In the next button below reservation, you have a button to check in this person from the room assignment screen. So in Opera, always remember you can do things in many different screens in Opera, it doesn't always have to be on the same screen. So we could check in this guest from here if we if we so chose to. Another button is the assign button up above. So we're highlighted on Carol Hartman's reservation. We can click on assign and it's going to take us to the room assignment screen. This is also a quick key. So if you pressed F3 on your keyboard, it would also bring up the room assignment screen. Notice since we were highlighted on Carol Hartman's reservation, her reservation is for room type DK1. Okay, It also tells you that her estimated time of arrival is going to be 2200, so that means this person is going to be arriving late. So maybe you could pre-block her into a do-out room if you don't have any other rooms available. Also, notice that there's a yellow border here. So this is how you filter what you want to see down below here. If I want to include the do out rooms when I look for a room for this person, I could check the do out box. It also shows checked out guest and vacant rooms. Notice you have the room status over here on the right. It will default to inspected. So if you want to see rooms on clean status and dirty status, maybe out of order, out of service, you could check those boxes and then we can search. Notice I checked the dirty box so it brings up all the rooms that are on dirty and that are vacant. So if you notice on the screen below you have the room number, the room type, housekeeping status, front office status, 
the floor that this room is on, and the room features. So if you wanted to remember that she had a request for first floor. So if we wanted to pre-block her in one of the first floor rooms, notice they're on first floor here, we would put an X beside the room number. So I'm going to pre-block her in room 117. It's on dirty status. I chose it and I'm going to click OK. And it just reminds you that it's on dirty and it wants to know if you want to continue. And I'm going to click yes. Once I pre-blocked Carol Hartman, notice her reservation disappears. Because I have unassigned rooms, so I only want to see the reservations that do not have a room that's been assigned to their reservation. So that reservation has been assigned, so it disappears. The next button, let's say you had a whole group of rooms coming in that have not been assigned, and you wanted to do them all at one time or assign them all at one time. We have this auto button here. If you click on auto, it allows you to automatically po put room assignments on the reservations. So you can either assign or you can unassign. So remember in the previous screen, we showed a group that had all the rooms assigned. So if we wanted to bring that group back up, let's say we wanna show them all in the bottom screen here. I could pull that up by the group name. Remember the group name was Opera Training. So I'm going to type in Opera for Opera Training. I'm going to click Search. Okay, and I checked the assigned rooms because remember those rooms were already assigned. So I want to see everybody in that group that has an assigned room or unassigned room. So if you notice for this whole group here, it's been assigned. Now let's say we want to reassign these rooms here for this group. So what we could do is we could go back to auto and we could click on unassign and it would go through and unassign all the rooms there. So if I click on start, so it says rooms have been successfully unassigned and I'm gonna close. And once I did the unassigned, notice that all the group rooms do not have a room number attached to the reservation now. So I just took away the room numbers, I unassigned them, and now we can assign them again. I just wanted to show you how that works. So now let's say we have this group here, the Opera Training Retreat uh, group, and we want to assign these rooms now. We could go down through each individual reservation, highlight it, Click on Assign, and we could search for an empty room, and then we could assign the room one by one if we wanted to. But let's say we wanted to assign the whole group at one time. So we can go over to the Auto button again. We're going to click on Auto. We're going to click on Assign. Notice how they marked all the reservations here because we're going to choose all of them to the assign. And let's say we want to include dirty rooms because we remember that all the rooms are on dirty right now. I'm not going to use associated preferences. So if any of the reservations had a special request or a preference request, it's going to ignore that. Okay. Let's say we want to start on second floor and we want to assign all the rooms on second floor if there's that many available. Okay, so now we're going to click on start and it's going to through and go through and uh, assign all the rooms. If I close, all of them are assigned here on second floor. Notice the posting master was not assigned because the posting master rooms are not on second floor. They start with 9,000 and they're not on a floor. So if we wanted to pre-block that room, we could just click on Assign, choose Clean, Dirty, and Search. This will bring up all the posting master rooms that you have available. I'm going to choose 9,008. I'm going to click on OK. And now we've assigned the posting master room also. Now. 
One other button over our right we haven't talked about is the exchange button. What the exchange button allows you to do, so let's say somebody else is already pre-blocked in another room. So if we highlight this reservation, room 207, and we click on exchange, it shows all the reservations that have been pre-blocked, and you can exchange the room number that you're in currently and exchange it with one of the other reservations that have already been pre-blocked. So if I want that room 209 and I want to exchange it, so I'm going to say I want 209 for the reservation I was just on. I'm going to click on exchange. It says, are you sure you want to assign room 209 to the reservation for opera training, training and assign 207 to the reservation for Tom, Thomas Efta? I'm going to say yes. So all we're doing is flip-flopping the rooms. One person's going to go into 209 and the other person into 207. So we're just flip-flopping them. So I'm going to click on yes. And now that reservation has been assigned to 209. Okay. And the last button down at the bottom is close. And that would close us out of the screen here. Okay. So that's the room assignment screen. So I'm going to close out of here. And let's go back to the arrival screen. So if we go back to front desk and we go to arrivals, I click on search. It brings up all my reservations today that are arriving. If you notice, we have two reservations that are not pre-blocked. And the rest of our arrivals today have been pre-blocked. Okay. So we looked at the house status screen first. And then we went in and pre-blocked the rooms. So we noticed that uh, our arrivals are some, most of them are pre-blocked. Now, another thing you can do is um, if you are a hotel that like to print out the registration cards ahead of time. So let's say you have 50 arrivals today and you've pre-blocked the rooms. And to make the uh, check-in process more efficient, some hotels will print out all the registration cards ahead of time. So if you wanted to print out the registration cards ahead of time by batch, we can go to the button for reservations here. And if you notice, we have one called registration cards. So if we click on registration cards, it shows for arrival date for tomorrow. But if we wanted to print them for today, and if you notice, our hotel date is on June 1st. So we're going to change the arrival date to June 1st. Hit our tab key. Notice that we want to print all our reg cards for individual reservation for blocks. We could do it for just certain names, maybe from all names starting with A and starting through maybe M if you only want to do part of them. We could in include VIP codes. We could include in-house guests. And we could also print out the registration cards for the pseudo rooms. The pseudo rooms are our posting master room. So remember, we have a group coming in today, and we had one posting master that was a rival. So we could print out the reg card for that if you wanted to. Okay. Once you do that, um, you could click View to preview on them on the screen, or you could click Print, and it would print out all your registration cards for those persons that are arriving today on June first. Okay. Another one I want to show you is the room plan. So if you go to reservations and you click on room plan, the room plan screen, if you notice up in the left, it tells you what screen you're on. Also the yellow border is your filter search. If I click search, it shows me a list of all my rooms here. It shows the status, housekeeping status, the room type, you notice it has the guest name in the pre-blocked rooms. So if I go down a little ways, use my down arrow or use my page down, it shows all the reservations that have been pre-blocked and their guest name. Okay, Notice Paula Long is in green. That tells you that that room, um, that she's a VIP. Okay. The other ones are in gray. If we wanted to go to Paula Long's reservation, 
we could highlight it and we can click on edit and it would take you to the reservation screen. Okay. Notice also over on the right we have a button for statistics. If we click on statistics it shows me total rooms reserved for today. Here's the date. Here's the date. Occupancy percentage, our arrival rooms, how many stayovers we have. So just quick look at information for today's date. Once I click on statistics again, it disappears and it takes us back through the screen. We also could do a room assignment here. We also could do a walk-in from this screen and we will do walk-ins in a little bit here so I can show you how to do a walk-in in Opera. We can also put, so if we highlight on Paula Long's reservation, we can also go into the reservation option on Paula Long's reservation here. Notice also down at the bottom, you can see the red lamps for that reservation for Paula Long, since that's the one we're highlighted on. You can put a room on out of order, out of service from this screen. And then we have a button for calendar. If I click on calendar, it takes us to the calendar screen. Notice the on June 1st, 105 in green tells you that's how many rooms we have available. If it was in red, that would tell you that we're overbooked for that particular date. Okay. We're going to close out. Also up at the top in the yellow border, if you only want to see the rooms that have been unassigned, we could click Assigned Rooms and click Search, and it would show everything that's unassigned. If we want to see the assigned rooms only, click Assigned Rooms, and it would show all the arrivals for today that have been assigned. Those are the arrivals we have today. We can do a vertical zoom. So if I click on Vertical Zoom, it makes you allows you to put more room numbers on this screen. And then horizontal zoom. Then it gives you more dates on the screen. So you can see farther out. We also, there's an advanced button here. I'm going to click on advanced and it allows you to search by different items in the reservation screen or the room plan screen, excuse me. So now I'm going to click unassigned rooms also so we can see everything. One other thing I want to show you from this screen is you can do a room move from this screen ahead of time. So if you pre-blocked Paula Long in 202, remembering that that person, remember that person had a comment, guest with the group, guest gets the amenity at check-in, so you double check it to see what the comments were. If I wanted to move Paula Long to a different Q2, let's say we wanted to move her to Q10. Uh, maybe, maybe that's her favorite room and uh, we had booked her in the wrong room here. So we can just click on Paula's name. Notice how the arrows turn black there. That means you can move. I'm just dragging, clicking on it and holding down on my mouse. And I'm dragging it to 210 says, do you want to change room numbers from 202 to 210 for Paula Long? I'm going to say yes. And then it says guest has been moved successfully. I will do that one more time. I'm going to click on Paula's room, hold down the left click, just dragging it up to back to 202. Do you want to change the room number from 210 to 202 for Paula Long? I'm going to say yes, and now we moved her to a different room now. So that's the room plan screen. Very helpful screen. You can do a lot of things on this screen. Um, so remember, you can do check-ins from here. You can go into the reservations from here. You could go to the reservation options from here. You can do a room move from this screen. You can also put rooms on out of order, out of service. It's a very helpful screen to, to be using. So I'm going to close out of this screen, and it takes us back to the Opera main menu. 
All right, so another helpful screen that you can use when you're doing check-ins, or maybe you're doing room moves, you're working at the front desk, um, another screen that's very helpful is the floor plan screen. Under reservations, there's a button called floor plan. It's a design of a layout of your different floors at your hotel. So notice at my hotel here, we have six floors. Let's say we wanna take a look at the second floor. I'm gonna highlight the second floor. I'm gonna click view. And it takes me to, this is something that is designed by the installer when they're doing the installation at the property. It's just a screen that kind of lays out the rooms. Notice there's a pool in the middle here. And notice there's rooms all the way around the outside here. So you've got all the different room numbers here. They're room types. Okay. Tells you what floor you're on. These are the elevators here. All right. So it's just very helpful so you can see how your rooms are laid out at your hotel. Now, a couple things I want you to look at. Notice you have down at the bottom, it tells you what each one is. So you notice all the red in the rooms that tells you those rooms are on dirty status. Okay. You also see a person with a suitcase there. That tells you that's an expected arrival or they are arriving. They've been pre-blocked into that room number. If the, if the uh, rooms were in blue, that tells you they're on clean status. If they're on yellow, that tells you they're on the housekeeping status pickup. And if they're on green, that tells you the room has been inspected and it's ready to rent. Okay. If you click on it, so I clicked on 207, I could create a new reservation here. Or if I wanted to go to the reservation for for the uh, person that's pre-blocked in room 207, I highlight on it, I click on reservation, takes you directly to Thomas Efta's reservation screen here. I close, takes me back here. If I click on room 206, I have a person with a suitcase here. Tells me That tells me uh, it's an expected arrival. Highlight it, click on reservation, takes me to the reservation screen. As you also notice, we have a check-in button here. So if you were uh, checking in the guest and you happen to be on this screen, you could do it from this screen here. Once again, another screen where you can do a check-in from. So we've seen three different screens that we can do a check-in from. Okay. If I close, I just jump to the fourth floor, click on view. These are your fourth floor rooms. Notice I don't have any persons with a suitcase there, so these are all available. They have not been pre-blocked. Okay. All right, so that is the floor plan button. It's under reservations and floor plan. We went over room plan today. We went over floor plan, and we also went over how to print your registration cards in batch. One other button on the reservation button here is the calendar. And I think we looked at that in our reservation class. But one more time, the calendar just shows you what's available. You have 165 rooms available today. So the numbers in green shows you what's available. If they were in red, it would tell you that you're overbooked at this time. If you wanted to know how many rooms for a certain room type, we could click on the drop down at the top here. And if we want to know how many K1s we have for today, click OK and search. So we have 27 K1s that are available to rent for tonight. 28 tomorrow, 35 on Saturday. Okay. And we close. Okay, so we're back at the main Opera PMS screen here, at the blue screen here. Let's say you wanted to print out a couple reports. You're the front desk agent. You're working 7 to 3. And I want to just print out a report that shows my arrivals for today. Okay, so all your reports are located under the miscellaneous button here. So we could go to the word miscellaneous here, or we could click on the miscellaneous icon. And then we have a button called reports. Notice once again, the word reports, it tells you what screen you're in. 
And if you wanted to search for a certain report, let's say you know that the word arrival is in the, in the report name. So remember the wild card, the percent sign. So if I put the percent sign, type the percent sign, and type arrival, it will bring up every report that has the word arrival in the title of that report. So if I wanted to just bring up my arrivals today, I would choose my arrivals detailed. Okay, so once I choose arrivals detailed, I'm going to click OK. And it takes me to a screen where I can choose what I want to show on that report. Notice it defaults to today's date. It also, this search criteria is for all reservations, all reservations. We're going to look at arrival dates here. If we wanted to show arriving guests and people that are already in for a certain stay date, we could choose stay dates. We also have the choice to choose just VIP onlys. We also could choose departure date changes only, so anybody who changed their departure date. And then you have these other filters here. You could do it by room type, membership type, market code, source code, rate code. And down at the bottom, you could include checked in today, cancellation. Remember, pseudo rooms are our posting master rooms. And then down at the bottom, we could have other things display on the report. Maybe we wanted to print the rate on there so we know what the rates are. We want to include the share names. We want to include routing instructions. We want to include a company guests, traces, notes. So you have all those choices uh, to have on your arrivals detailed uh, report. It's up to you what you want to put on it. Notice down at the bottom we have a sort order. So right now it will sort it by room number. If I wanted to sort it alphabetically, I could click on the word room number, remove it, and tell the system I want it printed out alphabetically. I click on OK, and then I click on Preview. And here is my arrivals detailed report. So if you notice, these two rooms have not been blocked. These have all been pre-blocked in rooms. Tells you what company they're with. They have a C, their arrival date, their departure date, number of adults, number of children, market code, source code, reservation status. Always remember down in the left-hand corner, it tells you what filters you chose before you printed the rate. Also tells you down in the right-hand corner, the RAP name of the report, but this is the report name that's sitting on the server. So when you click print, it pulls the information from this report on the server, res underscore detailed. Up in the right-hand corner, it tells you the date you printed it and the time that you printed it. This is your arrivals detail report. Okay, so that is your arrivals report that you just printed. So now I'm going to close out. I'm going to close out of reports. Okay, now let's say we are ready to check in a guest. We're ready to go check in a guest. We've got to find if we have any clean rooms. Um, we want to make sure that we have all the amenities in the room. So let's go ahead and go to front desk here. And we're going to go to arrivals. If I want to see all the arrivals that I have today, I can click search, and that brings up all the arrivals. Notice anything with a, a box that has a color by it is a VIP guest. So these Ginger Grant, Paul Along, are VIP guests. Always remember up above we have the yellow border, the search screen here. We could search by last name. A lot of times the uh, the guest will give us their confirmation number. They might have made a reservation through a third-party reservation system, and they might have the CRS number from their central reservation system. So that number would be different than what the opera confirmation number is. Other ways to search are is if you click on the advanced button, you have the advanced search here. So you could pull up just certain room types if you wanted to. You could pull up by room number, by market code, by reservation type. 
Okay, so just other ways that you can search for arrivals. So if you have 100, 200, 300 arrivals coming in and you just wanted to bring up all the VIP arrivals, you could choose the VIP choice and then it would only bring up the arrivals for the VIP. Okay, I'm going to click Advance and it takes us back to the screen. Okay, so let's say Thomas Efta is coming in to check in. So if it wasn't the first one at the top of the list, we could type in EFTA and we could click on search. Okay, so we can highlight, if we've highlighted the reservation, we see that Thomas EFTA is uh, pre-blocked in room 207. We see that Thomas EFTA has routing set up, has comments and a no post. If we click on routing, we can see that he is with the Opera Training Retreat. Room and Tax is going to the Posting Master 9008. Okay. If we want to look at the comments, we can click on the word comments. It says guest gets amenity at check-in. So we want to give that guest the amenity. They're probably behind the front desk, so we can give them an amenity. Also, there's a no post. What no post stands for is that person's payment, if I click on edit and open the reservation, if you notice their payment code is a cash. Whenever you have cash or check, that puts a no post flag on the reservation. So once we've checked this guest in, they try to maybe make a phone call from the room, or maybe you have movies that you can uh, uh, buy uh, when you get in the room, it would not allow that person to make a phone call. It would not allow them to buy a purchase a movie. It would not allow them to charge to the room from one of maybe your restaurant outlets. Okay? So that's if they have a cash or check payment. It'll put a no post on it. Stops them from posting to their room. Okay? I'm going to close and I'm going to go back to this screen here. Notice on the right here we have a button for walk-in. If this guest did not have a reservation. We could walk them into the system, create a reservation, and check them in all at one time. And we will do that in a little bit here. We could also check them in from this screen here. We could cancel their reservation. We could print their reg card ahead of time. So we could click on reg card and print the reg card. And I'm not hooked up to a printer, so we'll probably get an error. We could access the guest profile. If I click on profile, it takes us to Thomas Efta's profile. We can also go to the reservations option screen from here. And if we want to open the reservation, we can click on edit or we can double click on the reservation and it would open it up for us. So when I do a check in, I prefer to look at the reservation, the whole reservation. So I like to open up the reservation, okay? And a lot of hotels also like to do that also. Okay, so let's say Thomas Efta is in front of us and they want to check in. So we're going to open up Thomas Efta's reservation. It tells us room 207 is on dirty, okay? So they're on dirty status. We know the room is dirty, so it's not ready yet, okay? We notice that they're here for two nights. We've already assigned a room for them. We know they're here with the group opera training retreat. It tells us up in the right hand corner. Also has the block code, mark code, source code, payment. So we need to get a credit card for this guest so that uh, uh, they have a credit card on file so they can pay incidentals if they charge anything to their room. Remember, we have routing set up. That means that room and tax is going to be paid by the Opera Training Retreat. So we only need to get a credit card for incidentals. So let's say they give you a Visa card. If you had a credit card swipe, maybe on your keyboard, on the side of your PC, you could swipe their credit card here by placing your cursor in the payment field. And then you could swipe the credit card and it would automatically put the credit card number in there for you. But since I don't have a credit card site, I'm going to choose Visa. I'm going to type in 
their credit card number. Get my tab key, expiration date. Now we've entered the credit card number. Once I check this guest in, it will go out and authorize the credit card for any incidentals, and that is chosen by the property. So normally if the guest's room and tax was not being taken care of, the credit card, once checked in, it would go out and authorize for a total of room and tax for their stay, plus an incidental charge that your, your uh, hotel has requested to get from each customer. So some hotels may have $50 a day, some hotels may have $100 a day, depending on what a guest can go charge for at the restaurant, at the gift shop. Uh, maybe they have other outlets at their hotel. Okay, so we've got their credit card now. We look at their comments. We know that they, we give them the, the amenity that we have. If you want to see what the total for their stay is, see the rate here is $250. There's an ellipsis box beside it. If I click on that ellipsis box, I can click on rate info. Tells us the room is dirty again. It's going to give you that warning a lot. Now, notice it shows nothing here right now because we're only seeing what the guest is responsible for. So if we uncheck guest pay only, it shows us the rate. Tax our generates. Shows that the guest is going to owe $550 at the end of their stay. But remember, they have routing set up, so all these charges will go to the posting master. Okay. So if we check the box for guest pay only, it shows the guest owes nothing right now because room and tax is being paid for. We uncheck the guest pay, and that gives us the total. If we want to see the detail, if we want to see the breakdown of this $25, we can click on details. It shows the taxes, room occupancy tax, sales tax, total $275 per day. Okay, we're going to close out of this screen, takes us back to the main reservation screen. All right, so now we know the room is on dirty. So another thing we should probably get is have them sign the registration card. Remember, we printed them out earlier. And we also should get any profile information that the, the property requests. So if I want to add the address and maybe the phone number to this guest profile, we could click on the ellipsis box by the last name. Reminds us it's dirty. It takes us into the profile screen and we could get the information from the guest while they're standing here. Okay, and maybe we could get a phone number. And let's say we want to get a, a uh, email address so when they check out, we can email their folio to them. Okay. So we've got the information from the guest. We had them sign the registration card. Now, since the room is not ready, we're going to go ahead and put this room on queue status. Queue status puts it on queue status. It does not check them in but it puts them on queue status so we can track how long this guest is waited for their room. It also alerts housekeeping. They have a button they can wait for rooms, what room type, what room number. So it gives them information also about what's going on at the front desk. So to put this reservation on queue status, we're going to go to options. In options, remember they're in alphabetical order. So we're going to choose the button for Q, and the pop-up says place reservation on Q. I'm going to say yes. It tells me that there is one reservation on Q. This is the only reservation right now. I'm going to click on OK. Now it has put the room on Q. All right, so now let's say we put it on queue status. 
we've had him sign the registration card. Uh, we, uh, we don't have anything else. We can't give him a key until the room is ready. So once we're done with that, all we have to do is click on close. Takes us back to the screen here. Notice there's a red lamp on the reservation now that this person's on queue status. Okay. Another thing you want to check, depending on if the hotel uses pre-stay charging, since the guest gave you a credit card, and let's say they wanted to go have breakfast or they wanted to go have lunch while they're waiting on the room, depending on the hotel, there's a uh, feature in Opera that allows the guests to charge from the restaurant to a room that has not been checked in yet. So if the restaurant had a ticket for them and the guest does not, um, the guest wants to charge to the room, at the restaurant in the POS system, they can look up the last name and first name or look up the name by the last name and first name and they can charge the breakfast or the lunch to the room before the guest is um, checked in. And for this to work, you have to put the reservation on queue status. Now the other thing you want to check, when you go to options, there's a button called privileges. If you want to allow them to charge to their room, you want to make sure the pre-stay charging is checked. And usually we only allow guests that have a credit card on file to charge to their room. If it was a cash paying guest, it would have put it on no post and the pre-stay charging would not have been checked and they would have not been allowed to charge to their room. Notice we also have a checkbox for post-stay charging. That means if the guest checks out, they would also be able to charge to their room, maybe go to the restaurant after they checked out and they could charge it to their room even after they have checked out. So we have pre-stay charging allows you to charge the room before you're checked in and then post state charging allows to charge to your room after you've checked out on that day of checkout okay and scheduled checkout we'll go over later when we do cashier training okay all right another thing uh since we put them on queue and they might go charge you could also, also pre-authorize their credit card if you wanted to. So if you wanted to get authorization on their card, because remember, room and tax is being paid for. So we could authorize their card, maybe for if you're a hotel that gets $50 a day. Remember, they're staying for two days. So if they're staying for two days and we're a hotel that gets $50 a day, we could go authorize their card for $100 uh, before they check in. So we can go to options, we can go to credit cards, we can go to authorization if you have a credit card uh, system attached to your, um, to your uh, hotel, which we do not in our training system. So if we did, we, this button would have been lit up and we could have clicked on additional and you could type in the dollar amount 100 and it would go out and authorize the credit card. Once the credit card has been authorized, the authorized the, uh, amount would show here and the approval code would show in this box here. The approval amount would have been $100 and it would have gave the approval code of the authorization. This is, how, this is for hotels that have a credit card interface attached to Opera. Okay, so we put it on queue. So let's go ahead and close out. Let's close out the arrivals uh, button. Now, if we want to check for any reservations that are sitting on queue, under front desk, we have a queue reservations here. I'm going to click on queue reservations. It takes me to the queue reservation screen, tells you up in the left hand corner. You have the yellow search border and it shows we have one reservation on queue right now. The status is dirty, so whenever housekeeping cleans it, they can either update the status in Opera or if they have an interface to Opera, through the phones and in the guest room, they can update the status from dirty to clean or dirty to inspected. And then this would change the room status here. 
So this reservation has been on queue for five minutes. We know it's room 207. It's a K1 room type. Notice over on the right, you have a button to check in. So once the status becomes either clean or inspected, we could check in the guests right here because we've already got the reg card signed. We've already got authorization on their credit card. We got information and filled out their profile. So we've done all the stuff that we need to do a check-in. Okay. We also have a priority button here. So if we had 10, 15, 20 rooms on queue, you could prioritize uh, the reservations in the queue status. So if you wanted some of the VIPs to get their room first, we could prioritize the VIPs and put them at the top of the list. The next button is the reservation button. So you could go highlight the room, click on reservation, and it would take you to the reservation screen. We also have a details button. So if you click on details, it just gives you the detail of that room type. It shows the housekeeping section, how many credits they get for a stay over, what features are attached to the room. Okay. Statistics. Let's go ahead and click on statistics. Shows uh, that currently we have one room for K1 that has been waiting for seven minutes here. Just shows you an overview of the rooms on queue. Okay, we're going to close there. The next button is a report button. So if you wanted to print out a report of all the reservations that are on queue, you could do that by clicking the report, clicking print or preview or send it to a file format. And the last button is close. Okay, so let's go back to arrivals, front desk arrivals. Let's go ahead and search. And now let's say Ginger Grant is an arrival and she would like to be checked in. So notice Ginger Grant does not have a room assigned. Notice that she is a VIP. So we're going to click on edit to open up the reservation. And this shows us the reservation. They're with the Oracle Hospitality Company. This person has a visa card on the reservation. Staying two nights. Does not have a room assigned. Rate is $209. She wants a K1 room. Okay. So if we checked in this guest, the authorization would go out and get number of nights for two nights. So for $209 for two nights. Um, and then maybe $50 a day extra uh, for additional charges. Okay. If we wanted to see what the total is of her stay, we could click on the ellipsis button beside the rate. We could go to rate info. And it shows that she will owe $459.80. Okay, let's say that Ginger would like a roll away in her room. Okay, so that um, she has an extra person staying there. So they're going to get a roll away and they're going to charge that guest for the roll away per night. So we want to set up a fixed charge so that Opera will post the roll away charge for both nights. So we're going to go to options. We're going to go to fixed charges. We want it to charge daily. We have to tell Opera what are we going to post it to. Notice it's arrival date for two nights here. We're going to click the drop down for transaction code. To the right of the percent sign, we're going to type in roll for roll away. The transaction code is 1025. We highlight it. Type in the amount that we're going to charge for this roll away. We're going to click on OK. And that's the roll away charge. And let's say also this person is going to be charged for parking. She has a car and we need to charge it for parking. So we're going to set up a second fixed charge so it will post to her room each night for parking. So we're going to click New. It's going to be Daily. Transaction Code. Percent Sign. We're going to type in Park. So we have Guest Self Parking. And the amount we're going to charge is $30 per night. 
So now we have two fixed charges set up, one for the rollaway and one for the guest parking. I'm going to close, close out of options, takes us back to the reservation. Okay, let's go ahead and try to assign a room for this particular reservation. We're going to click on the drop down where it says room. It's going to take us to the available room search screen. And no notice there is nothing that showed up here. Remember it defaults to an inspected rooms. We're looking for K1s. Okay, so let's say we want to bring up the clean and the dirty rooms. And these are all the rooms that are on um, uh, dirty. So let's not assign a room. Let's just say we'll take the next available king room that is available when it comes, comes clean or inspected. So we're not going to assign a room. If they're going to use a different credit card, so we could put our cursor in the credit card number field, and if we had swipe on our keyboard, we could swipe the credit card number, and it would put the new credit card number in the field. And the next thing we're going to do is we're also going to put this reservation on queue. So we're going to go to options. We're going to go to queue. Place reservation on queue. Yes. So now we have two reservations on queue. Notice we had the red lamp down at the bottom. We click on close, close, and then we go back to front desk and queue reservations. Now we have two rooms on queue. This one's been on queue for 13 minutes, waiting for room 207. And this room just was put on queue, and they would like a king one, a K1 also. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look at our queue reservations once again. Let's see if we any of the reservations that are on queue have clean rooms. Oh, and here we go. So housekeeping has clean 207, and I would assume there might be a room for a K1 for this reservation. Okay, so since this room has um, been inspected now, we could check it in. So... I'm going to close out of here and take you to uh, the front desk and arrivals so you can see how I can check it in from that screen. So I put in the last name, EFTA. I click on Search. I click on Edit. And if you notice this time, we did not get the pop-up that says the room is on dirty. Now, I also want to show you a screen here that, uh, that is our upsell screen. So when a guest is checking in, um, Opera, we have set up in configuration different ways that you can upgrade. Um, we tell in configuration, so this room is a K1. The room that, uh, that you can upgrade it to is a DK1, which is a Deluxe King. So this is telling you that their current rate is $250. And for them to be upsold, in a Deluxe King one, so you could tell the guest, I have a Deluxe King room that is available, and that is for an extra $12.50 a night, which would make your upsell room rate at $262.50, okay? So it says, if you would like to continue with the upsell, highlight the desired upsell room type below and select OK, otherwise select Close, okay? So this tells you what room is available for an upsell, and it tells you how much. All this information is set up in configuration ahead of time so that that front desk agent knows what room type is available for an upsell and how much for that night uh, for an upsell. Okay, let's say we're not going to upsell this guest. So we're going to click on Close, and we have them in room 207. Remember, we've already printed the reg card. We've already swiped the credit card. And now we're ready to check in the guest. So to check in the guest under the arrival screen, we're going to just click on OK. And it's going to prompt you to check in the guest EFTA. So I'm going to say yes. And it tells you Thomas EFTA has been checked in successfully. We put him in room 207. They're with a group block. Routing is set up to go room and tax to the master. 
I'm going to click on OK, and the reservation disappears. If we want to check an in in-house guest to make sure the guest was checked in, I can close here. I can go to Front Desk. I can go to In-house. And remember now, the room number is in the first field now in our in-house guest search screen. Remember the yellow border? It's our search criteria. So in name, I know his last name is Thomas. I know that's his first name. We click search. And there is Thomas Epta's reservation. And you notice the status has changed to check-in now. Okay. The guest is checked in, he's all done. If you're, uh, during the check-in process, if you have a key interface attached to your Opera system, during the check-in process, it would authorize the credit card, room and tax, plus an amount per night, depending on the choice of the hotel. And it would also would prompt you to make a key at the time of check-in. So that all depends on if your hotel has the interfaces connected to Opera. Okay, so let's close there. So now let's do a second check-in. So if we go back to front desk and we go to arrivals and I click on search to see all my arrivals. So let's say Ginger Grant has come back and would like to be checked in. Remember her room was on queue. Notice the queue down here. If you want to see how long that person's been on queue, so they've been on queue for 56 minutes now, so they've been waiting. So if we want to check her in, we're going to click on Edit. If we would like to upgrade her, the upgrade fee, because her rate is at $209, the next room that we could upgrade her in would be the Deluxe King One Bed Suite. If you wanted to upgrade her in that next room, the cost would be $21, and now her upsell room rate would be $230. I'm not going to upsell her. I'm going to close. We've already swiped the credit card when we pre-regged her earlier, printed out her registration card. So now we want to assign a room, and let's see if we have any clean rooms now. So we're going to click on the drop down for room. Her room is a K1, and if you notice, we have three that are uninspected on the third floor. Let's say we're going to put her in room 305, so we mark 305. We're going to click on OK, and we have assigned room 305 there. We've swiped the credit card. Another thing you might want to make sure that her profile information is correct. We can go to the ellipsis at the end of the name. Also brings up the upgrade box. Takes you into her profile. We have an email address for her. So when she checks out, we could email her folio. <clears throat> now if we want to check in the guest, I'm going to click on OK, check in guest grant. We're going to say yes. And Ginger Grant has successfully been checked in. Takes us back to the arrival screen. If we want to look at Ginger Grant in in-house to make sure she was checked in, we could go to in-house, go to the name, the last name is Grant. Search. Ginger Grant shows that she's checked in. Okay. Now let's say a guest comes up to the front desk and we search for the reservation. Last name of Siler. And the guest does not have a reservation. If the reservation is not found, what would you like to do? You have three options. You can search other dates, you could perform a walk-in, or you could perform another search. If we wanted to see if there's a reservation for Mr. Seiler on other dates, we could choose search other dates. 
and still no reservation found. Click search again. So since Mr. Seiler does not have a reservation and we have rooms available, then we could perform a walk-in. A walk-in is creating a reservation and checking the guest in all at one time. We're going to click on perform a walk-in. Click on OK. It takes us to the profile search screen so we can create a profile for Mr. Seiler. There's no profile in our database, so we want to create a new profile by clicking New. We get last name and the first name. I would ask for their ID so you could get their address information. We could get their email address. And a phone number if you if your hotel requests it. Once we have completed the profile, I'm going to click on OK. Takes us to the rate query screen. Puts in today's date, you would ask the customer how many nights they were going to stay. Let's say he says one night. And let's say there's going to be two adults in the room. And now we want to see what rates we have available for his stay for one night. So we're going to click on OK. Takes us to our rate query screen. And we have a king. We have a room with two beds. Notice that we have those available. They're all in green up here, the physical inventory. Let's say they would like a deluxe king room for $359 per night. We're going to highlight the king room. We could either double click on the rate or click on OK. And it will take us to the reservation screen. Remember, anything in bold is a mandatory field. So we need to assign a room number for Mr. Seiler. So we're going to click on the drop down for room. We have two deluxe kings that are available and inspected. I'm going to choose 217. We're going to click on OK. Defaults to credit card reservation type. The source is a walk-in, since the guest is a walk-in. So after we've chosen the source, the walk-in, we need to collect the form of payment. So the guest is going to pay by credit card. You put your cursor in the credit card number field and swipe the credit card. And then it would also... Uh, during the check-in process, it would get the approval code and the approval amount. So I will type ours in since we do not have a credit card swipe in our training hotel. Expiration date. So we've attached the room number. We've got the form of payment from the guest. If we want to see what's going to be authorized for this credit card, we can click on the ellipsis beside the payment and it would tell us what the authorization rule was if the hotel had it set up. We can click on the down arrow for the authorization rule and depending on what the hotel is going to use, I'm going to choose number two, number of nights times daily rate plus an amount. And the amount for this particular hotel is $50. And this can be set up in configuration ahead of time. I click on OK. If I'm ready to check the guest in, I'm going to click on the OK button and it will prompt you to check in the guest. I'm going to click on Yes. It would authorize the credit card at this time. If you had a key interface attached to the Opera PMS system, it would also prompt you to create the key at this time. And then you would click you would get the uh, checked in successful box. You would click on OK. 
and the guest would be checked in. If we wanted to check to make sure he got checked in, we could click on in-house, type in the last name, click on search. If you notice, Andy Seiler has been checked in. Notice the status was a walk-in, so it tracks in Opera that this guest was walked in to the resort without a reservation. We close out, it will take us back to the Opera PMS screen here. So today, I've showed you how to do a check-in. I've showed you also how to bring up your arrivals. So we can go to Front Desk Arrivals and Search. So here are your arrivals. I've also showed you the House Status screen, which is Shift F3 using the Quick Keys. Click Search down at the bottom. It shows still we have 12 arrivals expected. Arrivals that we've actually checked in was three. If you wanted to see the arrivals that you've checked in, you can click on the drop down arrow. Takes you to their reservation screen and shows you the three reservations that we've checked in. Also shows your end of day projection and your housekeeping statuses. Notice at the beginning of the training, we had 120 dirty rooms. Now we have 23 that are inspected and three that are occupied. Close out of the house status screen. We also went over uh, to and showed you how to create and print out your own registration cards by going to reservations and registration cards. We also previewed the room plan screen. One thing I want to show you on the room plan screen now that we have a couple check-ins in the hotel. If you notice, under these two reservations, there's an explanation point in front of the name. On the room plan screen, if there's an explanation point in front of the name, that tells you the guest has been checked in. Close. We also went over the floor plan. Showed you the different layouts of the floor pan, depending on the property. If you notice on second floor now, all the rooms are inspected. Where earlier they were in red, that told you they were uh, the rooms were on dirty. But now these rooms have been cleaned, and they have turned to the green status. Notice down at the bottom it tells you green equals inspected. So all these rooms are ready to rent now. Notice in room 207. This tells you that the room is occupied. And on 206, it tells you that this room is an expected arrival. The other thing we went over was I showed you how to do a walk-in. And then remember, a walk-in is a guest that does not have a reservation and arrived at your front desk and would like to check into a room. The other thing we went over was the reports. We went over the arrival reports. Just a reminder, if you go to miscellaneous and you click on reports, put in the percent sign, we type in arrival, click on search, and it brings up any report that has the word arrival in it. That concludes this session.